2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. The title of the message is, Are You Under New Management? Are You Under New Management? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. The Bible says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one die for all, then all, then we're all dead, and that he die for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, Know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, verse 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Lift our voices unto you in praise and to listen to your word. We ask you now, Lord God, that you'll be with each and every person yes. in this room. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help yes. us not to be distracted by the things of the world or the things that are happening in our life, but help us to wholly concentrate and just hear your word, Lord God. And we ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord, let his words be powerful. Amen. and heavy, that it will prick us, reach yes. our hearts deep down, and that we will change our lives for the better. Yes. For those who are not saved, Lord God, they don't know you as your own person, Savior, Lord, we ask you that today will be the day of salvation for them. Yes. We love you and thank you, and, and we ask you that you will receive all glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you under new management? When you start a work and especially, you know, if you are under bad management, it makes your life terrible, horrible. Who has worked under bad management? Whether it was your boss, whether it was your, you know, senior leadership team. When you work under a bad management, it's going to work. It's not fun. And after you come home, you know, you don't feel like you had a good work day. As a human being, you're literally under two management. You're either under management, under God, or under Satan. Simple as that, right? If you're a born-again Christian, you're under God's management. If you're not, you're under devil's management. The Bible says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And there's condition. In order for you to be under God's management, that condition is being born again. That condition is being saved from the lake of fire. You can do all the good works in the world. You can give all the money in the world to charity. However, if you do not do as what the Bible says, you cannot go into God's management. You can't be under God's management. And it is funny how people take it so lightly, right? Isn't it? Uh, don't you feel like, you know, scared? Don't you feel like, you know, kind of wary when you're under the devil's management? And you're going to spend eternity in hell? And they will say, oh, you know, I'm just going to have party in hell with the devil, right? We're going to listen to our you know, heavy metal, rock and roll, and we're just going to enjoy our time in hell. I mean, it's, it's a foolish thinking, and it's foolish saying. I mean, the hell that's described in the Word of God is eternal lake of fire. You're just going to burn there forever and ever and ever. I don't think I want to be under a management where my end is going to be burning forever. Think about it. Many of us have been burned before, physically, and as well as emotionally, mentally, right? You've been burned by people, as they say. But when you're physically burned, 
it hurts. I mean, if you've been burned severely, you know, third degree, second degree, first degree, it lasts for a while. And I think, and I heard, because at where one of the safety classes, they were talking about, you know, burn victims. And this guy used to work in a trauma center. He said, the sound of screams that you hear when people go through, you know, burning, you know, various degrees of burn, is probably the, I guess, the worst sound you could hear when people are screaming because of their pain, right? You know, if your skin burns even a little, if you touch, you know, hot things, right, you, you're like, oh, man, it hurts so much. Imagine if you really get burned, right, where you could actually see your skin, you know, boiling, where you could see, you know, even your bones. Then it's going to give you a different perspective. If you've been playing around, you know, about hell, if you've been playing around about heaven, you know, you have to take care of it. Because the Bible says life is a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Yes. If you don't take care of this problem first, this eternal problem, where you need to be under God's management, because once you're a child of God, you could be a good child of God or a bad child of God, but you're going to be child of God forever. That's it. It's like, you know, you know Brother Olson, right? Brother Olson's going to be Olson no matter what. You know, he could be good Curtis Olsen, he could be bad Curtis Olsen, but he's always going to be Olsen, right? Once you're in child of God after being born again into God's family, no matter what happens, you're going to be under God's management. Imagine that. I mean, that's a great, great privilege, and that's a great blessing that, you know, I can probably tell you that I'm in the family of God, I'm a child of God, I'm under His management, and no matter what happens, even if I wanted to go to devil's management because devil's offering me millions and billions of dollars, I can't go. You know, I could try, but I can't. At the end of the day, you know, I'm going to say bye-bye. I have to say bye-bye, right? Because he's going down there, but I'm going up. Then if you are in the middle right now, actually there's no middle, you know, whether either you're going down right now and then, or you're going to go up. So you have to make up your mind. If you've been on the fence, you know, I know that there are a lot of loved ones out there who's been praying for you. There are a lot of loved ones out there who's been talking to you, you know, about Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think they talk to you about Lord Jesus Christ? Because they have nothing better to do, right? But do they want to annoy you? Do they want to, you know, make you feel bad? No. Only reason... They talk to you about Lord Jesus Christ is that that's the greatest, everlasting management you could be under where you could go to heaven once and for all. Because if you don't get into that team, if you don't get into that management, if you're not born again, you will spend eternity under Satan's management in hell forever and ever and ever. A lot of times, people don't recognize eternity issue. Right? Yeah. Brian just turned 13. Probably he waited all his life to be a teenager. Right? Like, oh, a teenager brings me certain privilege to be a jerk to my parents, per se. Hopefully not, right? I could do whatever I want, all the mistakes, you know. And, you know, once you get into more, you know, further along, you're like, you know, as a teenager, you know, I know everything. But you learn, you know, you learn. And then you make mistakes, and you say sorry, and then you come back to a, to a, I guess, to sanity, right? From insanity. Those years could be long to Brian, right? Those 13 years. But imagine if Brian has to spend eternity in hell. There's no more counting when you're in hell. Just like in heaven, there's no more counting. You'll be in, in your own mansion, you know, pure gold everywhere, and you'll be 
with the Lord praising, shouting forever and ever. But on the opposite spectrum, you be in hell forever. And you're just going to burn and burn and burn. And to a sane person, to a logical person, to someone who wants what's best for them, why would you reject it? Right? Why would you reject this free gift of salvation? You know, a lot of companies, if you want to get in there, you need to have certain kinds of, you know, qualifications, right? Some places say you have to have this certificate, you have to have these skills, you have to have this degree, you have to have this experience and whatnot. And sometimes it's hard to get into those top companies because you don't have enough experience or sometimes you don't know. Right? It's not about what you know, it's about who you know, and you don't know the person who's working there. And you get dejected, you know. Sometimes you wish, right? When you're looking for a job, you just get a call from a top company. Hey, here's a you know, job for you. And you're like, oh, am I qualified? Well, you're not. We'll just not give it to you. It was just a random drawing, you know. You have a, you know, half a million salary with stock options, and you don't even have to come to work. Yeah? You know, just, just sign this paper and do it. They're like, oh, it's too good to be true, right? Yeah. But if it were to happen to you and you saw that it was a real company, it was a real job, and it was real, in a heartbeat, you're going to sign it, and you're going to take it. But however, when it comes to free gift of salvation, which is more valuable than any money can offer, any pleasure can offer, any person can offer, you say no. I don't get like human psychology at that point. Right? Here's something where it's free. You don't have to do anything. Literally, you just have to, you just have to accept it. Right? You know, Lord died for your sins, and he says free, gift of salvation. I mean, when you Many parents here, when you give gift to your child, whether it's birthday or job well done, you don't really expect anything in return. You give it to him out of pure love because you love your child, because they've done a good job. It's their birthday. But Lord says it's free gift of salvation. Just accept it, and you have eternal life. If it's me, I'll be like, I'll always raise hand, right? Okay, give it to me, Lord. You know, it's free. I want it. But what is stopping people? What is stopping people from accepting that free gift of salvation? Why do they want to experience that change in their life? Why is it that they don't want to be under God's management and they want to stay under Satan's management? Obviously, one of the biggest reasons is because of the love of the world. Because love of the world and because of bad influences. Sometimes, you know, you got to make your own decisions. Like you have to look at yourself and make that decision. Don't look at someone next to you. Don't look at someone behind you, in front of you. You have to make that decision. I mean, if I were to die right now, am I going to go to heaven or hell? Well, first ask that question. If you don't know, then you have to ask the second question. Then how can I go to heaven? And Bible clearly says it, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I mean, that's what Bible says. I mean, it's clear cut. That's what Bible says. No matter what anyone says, Bible says it, and Bible is God's word. That's why people who's under God's management should never doubt their salvation anyways. Are you doubting what God says? If God says you're saved, then you're saved. Sometimes you think too much, right? I was having a discussion with a brother in the morning, and I kind of mentioned it last week too. Sometimes, you know, people go crazy after, you know, having a bad dream. People go crazy after having a good dream. Uh, people just go crazy after having any kind of dream. And 
you know, like I mentioned, right, in the Old Testament, you know, God revealed and revelation through dreams. But after Bible was completed, you know, there's no mention of dreams, right? But we do know Satan comes as an angel of light, could deceive people. So as a Bible believer, as a saved person, you shouldn't let dreams determine your day. You know, I, mean, I could go deep into it, but again, it's either because you've been thinking something, stressing out, you know, it just comes out in your dream. And out of the blue, some weird stuff comes out too. But should that influence your day? Should that make you like, oh man, I had a bad dream today, so I'm going to have a bad, bad day? No. I had a great dream today, I'm going to have a great day today. No. Well, are you going to blame it, you know, when you have a bad day after your great dream? Like, ah, oh, dream, you're a liar. You know? No. It's something that you shouldn't even spend one minute into it. But if you let that get to you, what's going to happen? You know, you're going to have a bad day, and you're not going to really do anything for the Lord. So you yourself have to think and make a decision today. Like, man. Which management am I under? And if I know what management am I under, am I performing like I should under the new management? For many of you Christians out there, you do know that you're a new creature. You do know that old things are passed away, right? But why do you act like your old self? There's a story, there's a crook, you know. Thief once asked, he was asked, why did you steal the purse? And he said, I was just feeling bad. I needed to do something that would make me feel good. That's the old him. The new him, after he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Stealing purses do me no good. I don't want to do it anymore. After you got saved, there are many things that you've done in the past. Many, many sins that, you know, destroyed you in certain ways. And if new management hates it, and you know you shouldn't do it, why do you keep on doing it? You know, it's a betrayal. You know, sometimes Christians don't understand. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, right? One of, one of the brothers preached during summer camp, you know, you make Jesus Christ cry, right? Whoever you are, if you believe in the word of God, you know, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God. And every time you disobey him, every time you don't do what he says, you know, you're making him cry. I mean, sometimes you're like, oh, he's God Almighty. But think about it. Lord, you know, was, God was manifest in the flesh. He wasn't just God 100%. He was human 100% as well. That's why we could believe and see and, you know, read what meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, right? Jesus Christ went through everything that you and I went through emotionally, physically, anything. He endured it all for our sake, and he died on the cross for our sins, shedding his precious blood. And you accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Some of you did, or many of you. Then if he is your Lord, and if you're under his management, why don't you follow? What would happen if you work for a current company, and if you constantly, constantly break the policy? HR will call you. They'll give you some warnings, right? And after several warnings, they do it, you're going to be fired. I mean, thank God, Lord's not going to fire you, right? He has much grace and mercy. But don't think that he doesn't have emotions. Don't think that you're not grieving the Holy Ghost. Think about it. Why do you have to follow old management? If that old management symbolizes and if that old management has all the dirty stuff, 
like dung, right? Like feces, right? Like this bad polluted, you know, things, chemicals, bad odor, you know, rotten egg smell. Would you stay there? I mean, why would you go there? You know, if it's harmful to you. We have, you know, some people who work out here, right? We have some people who's, you know, trying to keep good diet. And best thing to keep yourself healthy is also eating healthy, right? And if, you, if your doctor tells you, you know, John, you got to stop with the burgers. You have to because you're very close to, like, cardiac arrest. If John was serious about it, he'll stop. But unfortunately, many Johns out there will just eat it and go on to their grave like that. I mean, you yourself, that's why it's free will. No one will ever force you to be under God's management because God has given you free will. However, you'll be foolish not to be under God's management. If someone saw something good, they always try to share it with their loved ones. That's normal. There's a story, you know, you know there's an old country fella, right? And he, he and his son just live in the farm all their life. And then they went to a big city, you know, after 50 years living in a farm. And saw this thing going up and down. It was an elevator. They'd never seen it in their life. And they went in there. And they're like, wow, I'm on first floor. Now I'm on the 10th floor. It's so cool. And it's so good. And after the door opened, the farmer said to his son, you wait right here. I'm going home to get your mama and run her through that thing. Because he was so excited, it was so good. Farmer did not completely understand how this thing worked. But he did know there's been a change. There's been a good change, right? Then, if you know that this change is good, and you've heard from your loved ones that it's good, why wouldn't you listen? Are you that proud? Are you that stubborn? Right? And a lot of, lot, lot, a lot of people let great opportunities go by wayside because of stubbornness, right? Because being proud, right? I mean, as husbands, you know, how many times you did something and your wife told you not to do it way, way, way before, long, long time ago. Yeah, you still did it because of your pride. It's like you go to a shop and someone tells you, don't wear it. It's not going to look good on you. Don't wear it. It's not going to look good on you. And then you're like, I'm going to wear it. You wear it, you come out. But you can't even raise your head up because you look so bad in that, you know, clothes. But the loved one knew what's best. They knew. Then... If you're not saved, if you've heard someone say, you should get saved, you should believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be under the greatest management the world has ever known, will ever know, why do you wait? You shouldn't wait. Like I mentioned, do you know what's going to happen five minutes from now? Do you know what's going to happen one minute from now? Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? You sure don't. I sure don't. Then you have to make sure at least one question in your life you should be able to answer confidently, right? If you are to die right now, do you know for sure where you would go? If you say, I don't know, if you say no, then you have to get it right. And it's not that hard. I think people make it hard. People sometimes dig in too deep to the doctrine stuff. And that's something that you have to be careful, especially as a Bible believer. 
right? You start going into too deep with the, you know, some of the doctrines, it'll make you crazy. It'll make you doubt salvation. It'll make you stop someone from getting saved, right? There's only one condition, right? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And how do you believe on it? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, right? That's, that's all you got to do, you know? I mean, in the sight of God, what are you? Sinner. Do you know you're a sinner? Okay. If you don't think you're a sinner, you have no hope, right? I mean, literally, you know? I mean, have you ever disobeyed your parents? Have you ever lied? Have you ever hateful thoughts, you know, dirty thoughts? You know, just inside sin alone, you know, will just fill up this whole room. I mean, in the sight of Almighty God, you know, we are all sinners. Then, if you know you're a sinner, you have hope. Do you think you could go to heaven on your own merits, on your own work? You think you could, like, even out all the goods with all the bads that you've done? Never, right? It's like this. I have a white dress shirt, but if I get a permanent marker and then, you know, I, put a, I, I just put a line onto it, you know, it's gonna be hard for me to take it off. But if I have it at everywhere, you know, and I can never take it off on my own, where then it's gonna be always dirty. You have a thing called soul, and your soul has committed sin ever since, you know, you've been here on earth as a sinner. Then all the good that you do cannot erase all the sins that you already committed, right? Then what do you have to do? Then you have to find a way to get rid of all the sins that you've ever committed and all the sins you're going to commit in the future. How are you going to resolve that question? That's where Jesus Christ comes in. That's where he had to suffer for you and I and died on the cross for our sins so that we can be clean and white as snow. You know, the Bible has a spiritual circumcision, a little bit of doctrine, right? You guys could handle it. When you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, your body and soul separates forever. And if you know the meaning of circumcision, that's what it is. That's why where I could say, that's why where you can tell me, even if I were to be committing sin and die, I'm still going to go to heaven. Why? Because my body and soul separated forever, and my soul is white as snow, washed away. All my sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. Because I put my faith, you know, in Him, and in Him alone. That's it. Then you could have another assurance of salvation as well. It's such a great thing where, man, I won't have to worry about burning in hell. You know, I won't have to worry about dying, you know, where I had a bad day sinning today. I get this question a lot because I went through it a lot too. Where, you know, I had a bad day today. I sin more than yesterday or day before. If I were to die right now, am I going to go to heaven? I mean, if, you're, if you have trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, yes. Simple as that. Whatever sin that you commit in the future, whatever sin that you committed in the past, it's not going to cross out the fact that you're God's child. Just like the beginning of the message, you know, Brother Olson will be always Olson. When you're a child of God, you're always a child of God. And you got to go back to God. And that's in heaven. Don't get me wrong. Then people always ask, then can I do whatever I want after I got saved since I'm going to heaven? You know, God forbid, right? You know, because that's what the Bible says. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Of course, you got to get right with the Lord on a daily basis. 
Because you reap what you sow, be not deceived. God is not mocked, yeah. right? And you want to live a victorious Christian life like that. But before that, again, you know, if you haven't made that decision in your life where you're still under all Satan's management and you haven't gotten into God's management, eternal glory in heaven, once and for all, where you won't have to worry about burning in hell because you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have to get into that management. There are no excuses. What if today, because it's your time, you're walking out here or you're out there at your home or somewhere else, and it was your time to go. I know it happens to everybody. It happens to many people. You may even know someone who just dropped it because of their heart attack, because of a car accident, for whatever reason. Then you're going to be tormented for all eternity. Think about it. Man, you're going to be remembering for all eternity the day or the days that you rejected the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you're still burning. Imagine, you know, my whole body is burning, but I can't die. And I'm remembering, man, I had that chance to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Why did I reject it? Did I have to do anything? No. Did I have to pay a million bucks? No. Did I have to give charity work or do all this good work? No. Did I have to attend church? No. All I had to do was accept a free gift. Man, shame on me. And you're cussing at yourself. You're cussing at the devil for deceiving you. But that's going to go on for all eternity. Why would you want to let that happen? I mean, that is a future that you and I can clearly see according to the word of God if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and if you're under that old devil's you know, management forever. Then you have a choice today. If you don't know where you're going after you die, if you don't remember, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have any doubts, if you did not, you know, did, no one ever showed you clear from the Word of God, then this is an opportunity. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not five hours from now, not week after. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You already admitted that you're a sinner. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. You die because you're born as a sinner. However, Revelation 21, 8 says, But the fear of an unbelieving and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is second death. You're included in that group. I'm included in that group. Liar. We're sinners. Yeah. Then if you don't solve your sin problem, you're going to burn in hell, which is made for devil and his angels. Imagine that also. Yeah. Do you think the pain and torture will be similar to whatever that you're going to experience here as a human being when it's made for devil and his angels? That's why God commended his love to us in that while we're sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died, Christ. Jesus Christ died for you. Then, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're repenting heart. Just realize you're a sinner on your way to hell and you want God to save you. And final step is the verse, verse that I've repeated a couple of times, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, the Bible says, he that hath the Son has life. He that has not the Son has not life. I mean, that's as clear as it gets, right? Do you have Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior? The Bible says you have eternal life. If you don't, you don't have eternal life. You have eternal damnation in hell. Simple as that. Then it is time for you to make a decision. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Every eye closed, every head bowed. You've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've heard Jesus Christ died for your sins. You've heard that he is the only way. You know you're a sinner on your way to hell. And you don't want to burn in hell. You believe that Jesus died for your sins. You believe that his blood can wash all your sins. Then right now, wherever you are in this prayer, receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. 
please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. Lord, thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And if you truly did it from the bottom of your heart, realizing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and receive him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. Not me, not someone next to you. God says it in John 1, 12, but as many as received him. Did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you say yes, but as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. Yes. I mean, you're a child of God. You're under new management. Yes. I mean, that is something to shout about, right? Yes. I mean, that's something you should be excited about. And that is something where you could confidently say, you know, the Lord is my father. I'm under new management. I'm going to be a good or bad child of God, but I'm going back. And I'm going to be going, I'm going to heaven once and for all. If you did that, uh, God bless you for it. If you're still on the fence and waiting, I pray that you make your decision as soon as possible. Because that management that you're in, Satan's management, is going to crumble. I mean, it's going to burn. Would you want to take that chance? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through this free gift of salvation. We're new creatures, Lord, that sometimes we go to our old ways, help us to get right and live a life that is just according to the new management under you, Lord. We pray for Pastor Mike Shrive, continue to be with him, Lord. Get him well as soon as possible, according to will. And we'll pray for all these people hearing who's here. If anyone is still doubting or don't know where they're going after they die, I pray that they get right with you, Lord, and really seek out after someone to talk to someone and discuss it so that it won't go another day without not knowing where they're going after they die. Lord God, please bless today's baptism as well, and bless everyone, Lord. In just name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.